Glenn? Wayne. How are you now? Good, and you? Oh, not so bad. Ooh, look what you brought with you. Oh, Daryl. Oh, fuck. <laughs> fuck, you're naked as a jaybird. Wayne, it's humid. It's the humidity. Y'all might want to think about doing the same thing. Just pop your pants right off. That way no one gets sticky. No, it's not so bad. What's the fuss? Well, Ma Dale mentioned something about you helping her get a squirrel out of her attic. I'm faced with a similar conundrum right over there. Seems like some kind of rodents made his home over there. I have not seen him, but I sure can smell him. <laughs> mm. It's a possum. Mm. Possum. That's right. Oh, Peter Patter, let's get at her. Do you want to know what? I'd reach into a pirate hooker's chamber pot before I'd reach in there, and I'm going to tell you. Possums are immune to snake venom. They could probably survive a nuclear blast. I think it's pronounced nuclear. Mm, but it isn't. They're mutants. They have forked fucking penises. <laughs> we should all be so lucky. They do this thing called playing possum where they appear dead and emit a death stink from their buttholes. Fuck. <laughs> Found one playing possum one time, thought it was dead and buried it. Dug itself out a few hours later and fucked a hen right in front of her chicks. Wayne, think about the swear jar. You're putting so much money in. All right, let me take Peeksy. Better powder. Always had a skilled hand at wrangling vermin. Thank you, Daryl. And that doesn't surprise me. No sweat? <laughs> No sweat in this heat. That is rich. That's funny. Honestly, though, just take off your jumper. I'll hold it for you. You crawl up in there, no one gets Glenn? dirty. Glenn? Yes. Let's take about 20% off her up there, all right? Now, you want to have an eye because I come out meaner than spit and go like a hot damn. Is he likely to bite? Is the duck's ass water tight? Get ready to give him the size nines if he jukes by me. I'll be, I'll give him the size 12 and a half instead. Oh, I see him. That's some drunk evolution right there, bud. You gotta wonder what two Christ made miscreants mated to make that. It's almost not worth thinking about. Can I just reach for him? That's a better idea than going in head first. Put him where? Under my boot. Boys, just do your best not to make too big a mess, all right? And I am sorry again about all this heat. Woohoo! For fuck's sake. Well, fucking Alexander. This is where the dicks hang out. Well, that's right. Gaylor told me you're helping to clean up here now, eh? You shake it more than once. We know what you're doing. How long you been at it? 48 fiscal hours. Boy, that's more than enough time to see a nightmare or two around here, eh? Sometimes there's shit on the outside of the toilet. Huh? Sometimes there's shit on the outside of the toilet. Uh, is that right? You think that's bad, you should see the Uranus. Huh? You think that's bad, you should see the Uranus. They get pretty hairy over there. Or? Sometimes there's shit on the outside of the Uranus. What? Sometimes there's shit on the outside of the Uranus. Fuck, uh, duh. Well, how do you think it got there? I don't remember how I said sometimes there's shit on the outside of the toilet. Yeah. Well, I bet the shit got on the outside of the Uranus the same way the shit got on the outside of the toilet. Isn't that something? Is this piss now streaming? Wayne? No. How are you now? Not so bad, good you. Alexander! Up there, you're Canadian. In here, European. Oh, shit. Looks like someone unswallowed over there. You think that's bad? Sometimes there's shit on the outside of the toilet. Huh? You think that's bad? Sometimes there's shit on the outside of the toilet. Well, I spray the seat from time to time when I got crap on tap. But I never miss the bowl entirely. Fucking degens need to mind their scruples. You think that's bad? You see the Uranus. Huh? You think that's bad? You see the Uranus. Hmm. Pretty hairy over there? Sometimes there's shit on the outside of the Uranus. What? Sometimes there's shit on the outside of the Uranus. Well, how the fuck did shit get there? I remember how I said sometimes there's shit on the outside of the toilet? Feels like you told me that nearly a year ago now. Yeah, we're kind of burning daylight here, eh? Mm -hmm. I bet the shit get on the outside of the Uranus the same way the shit got on the outside of the toilet. Well, I don't offend for nothing, but I think I'd rather just piss outside, Alexander. No, I just came in and washed my hands. Why'd you wash your hands? Out of dirt. Hmm. Well, I never done. Maybe I'd have dirt with you and then just wash my hands after that dirt. Hey, gents. I know how the shit get on the outside of the toilet and also the Uranus, but why would someone take a shit on the outside of the toilet and also the Uranus? Because that's where the dicks hang out. Thank you all for being here today. 
I'm Dr. Connolly, lead researcher for the Fertility Frontiers Project. This is my brilliant supervisor, Dr. Karen Price. Hello. Nine months ago, we began working with a couple who had difficulty conceiving. But through a process we created called paternal embryonic gestation and an implanted artificial womb, their dreams of pregnancy have come true with one small difference. Please welcome Sandra Matson and her husband, Dad Matson, <laughs> history's first pregnant man. <laughs> Mr. Matson, you just made history. Any comment? Uh, yeah. Uh, anybody have olives and peanut butter? I'm having a really weird craving. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, in all seriousness, uh, we feel so blessed that life found a way. Mm -hmm. Now, if we could only find a maternity store with a men's section. <laughs> <laughs> now we'll open it up for questions. Yes. First, congratulations on this remarkable achievement. Dr. Connolly, how does a man give birth? Well, the plan was always been a scheduled C-section. Two weeks from today. But the plan has changed. It has? My team and I now believe that due to the fragility of the artificial womb, the baby must be delivered naturally through Mr. Watson's urethra. What? Who else has a question? I do? Yes, you, sir. Hello there. Uh, just to be clear, the baby will come out of this man's, um, now I'm, I'm sure there's a classy way to say this, but I'm going with pee hole. <laughs> yes, the elasticity of the skin and tissue in that area will stretch to accommodate the birth. Well, hopefully. Hopefully? Yes, uh, picture a bowling ball going through a Twizzler. Oh. <laughs> that said, we will be prepared for possible tuliping. I'm sorry, doctor, what is tulipine? Oh, I can take this one. Uh, yeah, the best way to describe it is with a Looney Tunes metaphor. So if you recall when Bugs Bunny would put his finger in Elmer Fudd's gun barrel, yes. when Mr. Fudd pulled the trigger, the barrel would boosh out, peel back like tulip petals, hence tulipping. Oh, my God. Yeah. So next question. Uh, yes, the woman in the wrinkled skirt. Oh. That detail was unnecessary. Um, Mrs. Matson, will you be present in the delivery room? Not anymore, no. Yes, the, the delivery room will be crowded. It will be all hands on deck and a few hands in deck, if you know what I mean. No, I don't know what you mean. Um, and lastly, will Mr. Matson be given the same epidural drugs used on women? Oh, no. Yeah, stronger? Unfortunately, no epidural or pain-numbing drugs can be used as Mr. Watson will need to push at full strength for the full 24-hour long birth. 24, I can't go any faster? Not without significant risk of tuliping. Stop saying tuliping, stop it. Yes, you, sir. Uh, yeah, first off, Mr. Madsen, congratulations, and I'm so sorry. Um, now, how long do you anticipate the recovery process will take? Um... Forever? I can't believe no one's asked yet, boy or girl. Um, it, it's a girl, which is good because we have a lot of girl names we like. Well, pick your top three because, surprise, you're having triplets. <laughs> Mr. Watson, any parting words? I mean, I'm worried about my penis. <laughs> we all are. Thank you. Steve says casually, pushing himself up so he can get himself in on the chicken ball action. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't and know. See, you say. You... Never spoken. It was funny, Logan. You said there's food out there because I'm starting to think up where they fry, up where they roast. You can get delicacies coast to coast. Someday I'll be somewhere. I'll see all of that food. Hello. Oh, God! It sounded Hi. like that for a second. <laughs> Hello, Steve. I want to look oh, at you God. right now. <laughs> much more throaty. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Claw. You know, That's it's really I great. Getting tickled by your beard in my butthole. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I didn't know we had Batman on this call. <laughs> Where's the trigger? Put your beard on my butthole. <laughs> Before I could see his reaction, though, everything went blank. Darkness, pure and overwhelming, dulled all my... Darkness! All of my Imprisoning senses. me! Oh, no, <laughs> absolute darkness. <laughs> darkness. Bargains, darkness imprisoning me. All that I see. Absolute savings. What a great find. What a great deal. <laughs> Emma looks sexy as hell. <laughs> that you can eat with forks and knives. Have you been working on that? <laughs> oh, I haven't. Maybe I have. We'll have to see. see. I'm ready to eat what Steve-O eats. <laughs> Uh, Dave, you know that's just edamame. What's edamame and why does it... What's the word? Suck. (laughs) David, I mean, it's just soybeans that are microwaved inside the shell. That sucks, but give me a steak medium rare. (laughs) (laughs) So, um, yeah, because then snakes will come get you and your vagu. Why does it sound like an old wives' tale from Mother Russia? <laughs> because it is. Wait. Josie son, you must not masturbate with window open, otherwise Kubla Khan comes after you. Oh, no, and uh, that that accent. For, for males, if you masturbate with the window open, the Baba Yaga comes and bites your penis off. Hey, you know, at least you got some action. <laughs> no. So, uh, second second year of college, I roomed in a three-person dorm at the corner of the second floor in College Park. Um, the first roommate I had, Eric, is still, to this day, one of my best friends. But we had two replacement roommates for the third. He spent a lot of time in the dorm. Now, like, he didn't skip classes or anything, but uh, he spent a lot of time in the dorm watching movies, and he watched movies in the most irritating way. He and would watching bad uh, comedians and laughing his ass off. So, Seven is a fantastic film, but not if you skip ten minutes of the movie every thirty seconds just to click through it and get through it faster. Wait, what? <laughs> That's literally what he did to watch movies. That's horrible. I know. Not not good. I'm coming home from class early one day. I put in the key to the door and I open the door and his desk is directly in front of where the door is, giving about three feet of leeway between how far the door swings and where his desk is. And Oh, yeah, yeah. I had a setup like that. So I, I, I just catch a glimpse of it, it couldn't have been viewed any more perfectly there's an open styrofoam container from the dining hall in front of his okay. desk and the top part of the lid is obfuscating whatever is below his waist as his upper section sitting in his computer chair is moving very rhythmically and frantically okay as one does as one does and um so he he sees what's going on and he slams his hand against the door and, and he's like come back in 10 minutes <laughs> So, uh, obviously, he was masturbating. The thing that gets me is he had a... the In the styrofoam container were a bunch of, like, fried chicken bones. And I didn't see any napkins on his hand. And there was a greasy handprint on the door from where he slammed it. So, he was using the chicken Listen, grease as natural Steve. lubricant. Hot wings make the best lube. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, kids, Steve. if you run out of lube, just go down to your local pizzeria and order some hot wings. The the hot wings, especially like the ones that are like just hot enough to make you sweat, that, that little capsicum oil adds a very pleasant tingle to your jingle. You were hawking the ball around with your pals the other day. Say, uh, what's the deal with your sweetie there, Squirrely Dan? Well, I took her out last night. Where to? Out to the chip truck. Fries and gravy? I had mine with gravy. She had hers with salts and malts vinegar. It's not salt and malt vinegar is not a traditional way to dress your french fries in the United States. What the fuck is wrong with them? Like, malt vinegar is not a staple condiment on tabletops or restaurants in the United States. Fuck, figure it out. That's what I say, so figure it out. Yeah, no vinegars on the tables, no Kraft peanut butters. Figure it out. Fucking figure it out. Better not forget those fucking all-dressed chips. No ketchup chips, neither. Figure it out. Somebody really ought to write a letter. You do got six different types of Cap'n Crunch, though. How do you know that? Saw a comedian talks about it on the Just Careers. Can't remember his name, though. Good guy, though? A little long-winded for my taste, but yeah, pretty good guy. Well, glad to hear he's a good guy, at least. They have running water down there. Anywho, the uh, evening went so well that uh, we got through a little bit of the fooling around. 
You French her? Kind of line there, Derry. Did you go up her shirt? No, you're really out of line, Derry. We did French. That much I will reveal. We already revealed that much. You might as well just tell us if you went up her shirt. It's impolite to kiss and tell, Derry. I don't like to kiss and tell, but the Frenchans took the hard left turn from which I have yet to recover. Do you want to what? I'm not asking you to kiss and tell. That's impolite. But I'm kind of curious. Yeah, Dan, kiss and tell. I'm sure you boys have had a couple curveballs thrown your ways betwixt the sheets. Well, not to be impolite, but you know, sometimes a gal will be kissing around on like the area near your genitals, but not quite on your genitals. Makes me ticklish and insecure. You know, not to be impolite, but sometimes a gal will do some kissing on the ears, which makes me uncomfortable because even though I clean my ears, sometimes a tater will just roll out of there unexpected. <laughs> that kind of likes both those things. Yeah, that's why you're called Squirrely Dan. Yeah, reason fucking five million. Well, not to be impolite, but this gal suggested that maybe I should have some attentions paid to my butt's hole. That ever, ever happened to you guys? You ever have a gal suggest that you need some attentions paid to your butt's holes? I take that as a hard no, I guess. She put a couple fingers up there and turns out you got a, a neurogenous zone up there. Found found the hot button and gave it a tickle and uh Yeah, feels uh it feels pretty good, you guys, okay? Pop fly. I really liked it. Felt, felt very natural. Nice. That's how you get the body in front of it. The body in front they of call it. it milking the prostate. What's well, in polite to kiss and tell? The back door of the taxi was nudged open. After a long trip of sitting on a plane, then waiting on the bench at the airport, then sitting for the final stretch in the taxi, a male kangaroo, young at 27, handsome in his forest camo fatigue, stretched his arms to the sun before ducking back into the taxi for his duffel bag. That just made me realize, in this universe, do you think Kangaroo Jack is actually the main character of, of the oh, movie? Geez. <laughs> he, did, he appears Wait, for more not than even, like five not even minutes. The kangaroo, not even the kangaroo Jack is like played in live action, but the kangaroo Jack is the main character. Well, here's in the, the thing. Because in the original movie, like he's on the poster and all, but he appears for like five minutes because he was clearly here's, added afterwards. <laughs> oh God, now I have to make a poster for Crocodile Dundee, don't I? Here's the thing. <laughs> kangaroo Jack is, well, played by an actual kangaroo. But the humans are now CGI, and the movie is named after the humans. <laughs> oh, and everyone's like, what? I thought those two guys were going to be the main characters. Instead, it's this kangaroo. Yeah. I came here for amusing humans saying stupid things. Who are the people who, who made, um, uh, what's it called? Who, who were in Kangaroo Jack? The, God, who? I don't know. Like, who knows? One I, of the I guys was from SNL, and nobody liked him on SNL. Yeah, especially. Um... And the other guy, like, I don't even remember who he is, except for the fact that he, like, I'm just trying to think, who would be, what would be the better title for the movie? You know, I guess Anthony Anderson would be a pretty good title for that movie. Anthony Anderson? Just Anthony Anderson. Yeah. Or no, it would be called Human Anthony. Man, do you remember that scene <laughs> where, like, <laughs> Human Anthony? Do you, do you remember the scene where he, like, grabs that woman's tits, and then, like, later they fall in love? You know, despite seeing Kangaroo Jack more than once as a kid, I can't remember anything from it. You're, and you're, I think that's the best. I think that puts the movie into perspective in one sentence. For me. We went to the theater to see it. My because my parents like they didn't really read any reviews. They we just happened to be at the mall at the time. Like, hey, you want to see a movie? Oh, so geez. they just saw it. It was the only PG rated movie at the movie theater. Everything else was like hard R. And it was like, well, yeah, like we were little kids, so they're like, okay, we're gonna go see Kangaroo Jack. And no joke. We were going, like, when my mom went to order the, like, like, get the tickets, the lady said, are you sure? 
She's like, because that mo- like she straight up said that movie is like really bad. Like, would you rather see like like Jackass? My mom's like, my kids are too young to see that. And she's like, well, Kicker Jack's kind of a, a, a fucked up movie, but like, okay. She's Your kids really are too reluctant. pure to see Kangaroo Jack. And then, like, my mom was like, "Yeah, that lady was right. That we probably shouldn't have seen that." Now, can I can I just can I just remind you, Kangaroo Jack is an award winning film. It oh, was yeah. critically panned, but it did win the Kids Choice Awards for favorite fart in a movie <laughs> in two thousand four. That is a true fact. Yeah. Connor was the only one oh. who voted on it. He was like, "Yeah, it was the best." <laughs> You know, like, nobody else voted in that category. And Connor was like, I think Kangaroo Jack has an all right one. You know what? That's our winner. <laughs> Fucking, you know, Kangaroo Jack is what I, I don't want to see it again, but just because it's not like some, it's not even like some nostalgic thing where I thought it was really good. I knew it was pretty bad, but I don't really want to see it again just because I still know it would be worse than what I'm imagining. <laughs> it's so much worse. Yeah, I, uh, yeah. Hey, Lisa, Kangaroo Jack should exist as a reference and nothing else. Yes. I, I never saw anything other than the commercials, and even when I was a kid, I looked at that and went, that movie looks like utter trash. At least Why it did has they a... make that film? And oh like, my gosh, guys, I have a great idea. Kangarooth Jack. Oh. <laughs> We'd have to read, like, all eight of the Kangaroo Jack stories that have ever We'd been made. We'd have to see the movie again. Oh, man. I am getting a st- I'm going, when I fly back to L.A. tomorrow, I'm going to the Buggy Whip restaurant and getting a giant fucking steak. You heard me. I enjoy steak too much because I hate hippies so much. You know what I mean? I enjoy it more than I think I actually enjoy it. Every time you eat a steak, like a hippie's hacky sack goes down the gutter. And you're like, oh, man. Oh, dude, what the fuck, man? Every time you eat a steak, a hippie's hacky sack goes into the sewer. Always remember that. And I like to, I mean, I'll go to Lowry's and Ruth's Chris, the really high-end steakhouses, but I'll go to the shitball steakhouse. I don't care. Outback, Black Angus, I'm there. It's steak! Not so much Black Angus, though. Because remember how friendly the ads for Black Angus used to be? They're like, come on in and have a steak. How about a baked potato? You're like, fuck it, how about, yeah, I'll see you tomorrow night. <laughs> Table for two, seven fifteen. Now... The ads for Black Angus, have you noticed how it's turned into this gauntlet of angry food? It's like they're almost like challenging you. Like, at Black Angus, we'll start you off with our appetizer platter featuring five jumbo deep fried gulf shrimp served on a disc of salted butter with 15 of our potato bacon bombs and a big bowl of pork cracklings with our cheese and butter dipping sauce. You're like, um... We're, we're all going to split that. Oh, you'll each get your own. <laughs> then we'll take you to our mile-long soup and salad bar featuring bacon and cheese cream soup and our five head of iceberg lettuce He-Man salad served in a punch bowl with 18 pounds of ranch dressing, pork stuff, deep-fried croutons, and what the hell, a couple of corn dogs. Uh... Hey man, I'll tell you what, I'll just, I'll get like a mixed green salad. Hey, I'll suck a cock on the Golden Gate Bridge before I bring you a mixed green, buddy. I, what? I, <laughs> then we'll wheel out our bottomless trough of fried dough. I, what, wait a minute, am I getting a steak? Oh, you'll get a fucking steak. Cause then we'll bring out our 55 ounce Los Mesa He-Man steak slab. Served with a deep fried pumpkin stuffed with buttered scallops and 53 of our potato bacon balls. Oh, dude, I don't think. And then bend over, Abigail May, because here comes a gravy pipe. I... What? Black Angus, doors are locked from the outside, faggot. But no, I. When did I? At Black Angus, your name is Peaches. <laughs> order, order, my colleagues in calamity. 
I hereby call to order this meeting of the International Mad Scientist Society. As you know, it is time for the Mad Scientist Society's annual Most Evil Invention in the World contest. Yeah. 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 Yes, esteemed evildoers. You have had all year to work in your secret laboratories on an evil invention that will shock the entire world with its dastardly design. Who's first? <laughs> I am Dr. Micronox, and the most evil invention in the world is my shrink ray. It can reduce a monument to the size of a toy. I'll have the Eiffel Tower on my keychain and Mount Rushmore as a paperweight. <laughs> oh, ho, ho, ho. very evil, Dr. Micronox. I guess bad things do come in small packages. <laughs> 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 Who is next? I am the Baroness Antarctica. My entry for world's most evil invention is the freeze ray. Oh. I shall encase all the world's most famous monuments in solid ice. <laughs> so chillingly evil. <laughs> okay, who is next? Hi. Hi, guys. Uh, <clears throat> I'm, um, my name is Roy, and uh, I... Um, and for the most evil invention in the world contest, I invented a, uh, a child molesting robot. <laughs> I, I beg your pardon, what? Um, oh, I'm sorry, I, I'll speak up. Uh, it's a robot that is designed to molest children. And uh, I call it uh, Robo Chomo. Uh, you see, it's powered by solar rechargeable fuel cells and it costs pennies to manufacture. Uh, and it can, theoretically, uh, molest twice as many children as a human molester in, quite frankly, half the time. Um, so, uh, do I win the contest? It seems like I, uh, I win. It seems like I win. Oh, yeah. my God! What's wrong? What's wrong? My most evil idea was a blizzard in July. Right. Well, I went in a slightly different direction with the assignment. You built Yes, yes, yes. That's, that's exactly, exactly right. This this guy gets it. You get it. Oh my God! No, I don't. How how do you even build a child molesting robot? Well, that's a um, that's a great question. What you do is you start by building a regular robot, uh, then you molest it and hope that it continues uh, the cycle. Dear Lord Almighty. That's the most hideous thing I've ever heard in my entire life. Oh, well, thank you very much. You see, the shrink guy uh, uh, is with me all the way. Stop saying that! <laughs> you know, I want to remind you guys that uh, in Webster's Dictionary, defines evil as profoundly immoral. We know what evil means. Well, it doesn't seem like you do, because you built a, a freeze ray. <laughs> I mean, Benito Mussolini used to force feed people castor oil until they literally died of diarrhea. Oh. I mean, that's got to be where the goalposts are, right? Am I crazy? <laughs> I think someone should call the police. Okay, okay. Well, I think we're all getting a little hangry right now. <laughs> let's uh, let's break for lunch. Okay, I'll buy uh, I'll buy you all a sandwich at the restaurant across the street. Get out of here now! Well, sh sh let, let, let's just go talk it over at the restaurant across the street with the, uh, the medieval decor and the little miniature beef sandwiches. It's a White Castle, man! Just say White Castle! <laughs> Who the hell calls White Castle a sandwich restaurant? Okay, okay. Well, you guys are mad. I'm really sorry. I just, I just wanted to win the contest. I, I guess I, I really screwed up. No, Roy. You have nothing to apologize for. Yes, you made a robot that molests children. But you also made an important point here today. Things are always better with juicy beef and onion sandwiches from White Castle, America's medieval sandwich restaurant. White Castle will serve anybody. Is it because you want to get baconated? Hashtag baconate your man. Yep. I still haven't eaten a Baconator, by the way. Steve, let's go do it right now. How about this? Next week, I'll get a Baconator right before the show starts, and I will eat it on the air. Oh, God. You're going to have a fucking heart attack on the show. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll die as I lived, covered in sweat and eating things. <laughs>
<laughs> Steve, I will go get a Baconator too. That way we can have Baconators together. And die together. <laughs> we can have a Baconator date. Everybody, community event coming up. Uh, Why are we <laughs> giving them money? What? <laughs> giving who? What? Why are we as a community trying to give them money? Because Wendy's is delicious. What are you talking about? <laughs> it's horrible. No, it's incredible. One thing that we have organized for tonight is we are doing a Baconator eating. I've never had a no, Baconator no. before. <laughs> Why are we doing this? So they have a sandwich called the Bacon Maple Chicken Sandwich. So I got one of those too. Wait, what? Yeah, Bacon Maple Chicken Sandwich. Bacon and chicken? Bacon and maple spread and chicken on a croissant bun. So visual presentation already very lackluster. The bun looks like a wrinkly butt. Don't all. I see three pieces of bacon. Nothing like the picture at all. I don't know. Mine turned out all right. Yeah, but you probably went to a good Wendy's. You know, you could go to a good Wendy's too if you just believed. All right, gonna try it. Here we go. Mm. Rom, 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 rom. This is the worst ASMR ever. It's okay. It's marginally enjoyable. I do feel like for what I'm eating, there isn't a lot of flavor per uh, mass. Yeah, it's almost like it's fast food. It's filler. Why did you con everyone into eating applesauce and newspaper? <laughs> Logan, I think you just answered your own question, bro. Alright, next up is David. Oh boy, I can't <laughs> wait to go. It sounds like the Baconators killed him. Uh, yeah, kinda. Um... He, he just <laughs> ate three fucking Wendy's sandwiches. Of course he's almost dead. Yeah. Did you really eat all three of them? I sure did. Oh god. <laughs> Look, I'll die for my art. Why do we feed you before the show? It just makes you tired. I can do this. All right, we're on page 29. Wrong. <laughs> page 24. No. <laughs> page 28. No, we started at page 25. Right, we're on page 28. Wrong. Jesus <laughs> fucking no. Christ. Page 27. Yes, 27. Thank you. What's 25 plus 2, Dave? Not three sandwiches. Look, I don't know how many people read. There's a cavalcade of people on the show. It could have been any number. How long do you think it's been since you ate those sandwiches? This time just dilated for you. <laughs> it has to have been weeks. <laughs> <laughs> like Christmas has come and gone. It's a baking coma. <laughs> All you got for Christmas was more Baconators. Oh, God, no. <laughs> <laughs> come back. I said, staring at the doorway. Oh, God. Okay, uh, has anybody here watched Gundam Wing? No. Yes. No. All right, so you remember that scene in, like, episode fucking one of the show where they're introducing uh, the main character to the main character girl, oh. and she's like, she just stands there trying to shake hands with the wind after he steals an ambulance and fucking drives off. And yep. she's just introduced herself. She's like, hi, I'm Relina. Nice to meet you. And she's talking to an empty street. The show is stupid. That's what I <laughs> no, imagine. No, the hero is stupid. <laughs> no, the whole, like, every everything about Gundam Wing is fucking garbage. All right, how do you yeah. make a show about giant robots fighting in space boring? How do you do that? How do you do that? <laughs> they, they were able to do that. <laughs> All right, can we get back to reading about terrible people doing terrible things to terrible creatures? The Gundam was amazing. This shit was on point. It's like they all... You're so close! God damn it! Yes, let me finish. It's it's like they, they concentrated all the terribleness that could happen in Gundam and put it in the same series. You know what I like doing? Talking about Gundam instead of doing this story. Let's do that. All right, <laughs> Friday Night Fan Fiction is now Friday Night Gundam. All right. Were we talking about G Gundam and David's Donger? Tonight's topic, oh. my <laughs> Gundam to represent <laughs> <laughs> Shin Long Gundam from uh, G Gundam. <laughs> Steve was pissed. I'm not sure. <laughs> Steve would be the tequila Gundam. <laughs> <laughs> He's a cactus in a sombrero. <laughs> <laughs> yes, babe. That is the truth of the human condition. We all <laughs> a cactus in a sombrero. <laughs> Gundam. (laughs) (laughs) 
Hey, Matt, I think there might be one more gift for your mom right there. It hasn't been a normal year, so this Christmas, get her something extraordinary during the Lexus December to Remember sales event. Nathan, you didn't. With flexible financing and 0% APR, there's never been a better time to buy or lease a new Lexus. Merry Christmas, baby. Are you kidding me, Nathan? Did you seriously buy a car without asking me? Well, because for Christmas... This is a major purchase! Right, but it, it was a December to remember. It's a Lexus! We don't have the money for this, Nathan! We don't? No, we don't! Your father doesn't... Your father hasn't worked since last March. What? Yeah, COVID has hit a lot of people hard, and I'm no exception. Nathan, you got fired in March 2019. COVID had nothing to do with it. <laughs> Hey, pal, I guess your old man's busted. Mm. It's beginning to look a lot like savings, so get to your local Lexus dealer today. How much did you spend on this ridiculous car, Nathan? It was only $39.99 to its signing. Four grand. It's not that much, babe. And how much is the monthly payment? The what? Did you think this entire car cost $4,000? Uh-huh. There's a monthly payment. Yeah, but with the 0% APR, I think it's all good. APR? Do you mean APR? I'm pretty sure it's APR. Wow. Just wow. Hey, come on, it's Christmas. This is good. I did a good thing for us. Let's enjoy it. Dad, it's 9 in the morning. So? It's not like I have work later. <laughs> come on. Hey. Hey, neighbor. You bought a Lexus? You come to me three weeks ago. Oh, Mike, help me. I need money. I can't buy Christmas gifts for my family. My wife doesn't respect me. I didn't say that. My wife's cheating on me with everyone. Mom, you are? I want to look cool in front of my son's girlfriend. Ew, Dad, is that why you pierced your ear? Uh, no, I've had this forever. I just need five grand to get back on my feet. And then you buy a Lexus? Yeah, well, it was beginning to look a lot like savings at my local Lexus dealer. I want my money back, man. Tomorrow. Hey, Kathy. What is that look? You know what? We're taking this car back to the dealership now. I better drive. Maybe we stop by Jenna's on the way over. Show us a cool car your dad got, huh? Shut up! Give the gift of Lexus and definitely talk it over first.